In 1716, at the Cowgate in Edinburgh, near to where the back stairs once stood that led from the Kirk Hall to Parliament Close before it was remodelled, there lived an English officer from York by the name of Captain John Cayley. Handsome but vain, he was the son of Cornelius Cayley of York and grandson of Sir William Cayley, first baronet of Brompton. He'd been born in 1682 and went on to study law, spent time in the army, and was made Commissioner of Customs and Excise in Scotland in 1714. But he and his fellow officials were disliked, as to the good folk of Edinburgh they seemed obnoxious and a little heavy-handed in the carrying out of their duties. This was a time not long after the union of the Parliaments of Scotland and England in 1707, and just a year after the Jacobite Rising of 1715. Cayley was known to be flirtatious with the local women, and his reputation went before him. One woman who he was charmed by was a young married woman, who was said to be a great beauty. She was the daughter of Colonel Charles Strayton, a well-known supporter of the old pretender, James VIII, and the Stuart cause. On her mother's side, she was also the granddaughter of Sir Andrew Forrester, the former Under Secretary of State for Scotland, who died around 1704. She was married to John Macfarlane, a man some years her senior. He was writer to the signet, and had been at one stage an agent for Simon Fraser, Lord Lovett. Cayley and the Macfarlands became friends during his time in Edinburgh and he showered gifts on Mrs Macfarlane. Whether she encouraged him or not is unknown, but what is known is that he'd fallen in love with her. At the end of September 1716, Cayley was given leave to return home to England for six weeks. On Saturday, 29th September 1716, 19-year-old Mrs Macfarlane, who was on Sant due to an indiscretion before she got married, visited his lodgings at a house near the old back stairs, but was told by Captain Cayley's landlady, Mrs Murray, that he'd said some terrible things about her being pregnant. He soon learned that she'd heard what he'd said, and according to his friends, he wished to make amends and apologise, so he went to Mrs Macfarlane's house on Tuesday, 2nd October. Others suggest that he had meanly and revengefully circulated reports derogatory to her honour, and she had resolved to punish him. Either way, he was shown into the drawing-room by a maid, but when Mrs Macfarlane entered, she held two pistols, and ordered him to leave. Taken aback, he asked, What, madam, do you design to act a comedy? She retorted sternly, If you do not retire instantly, you will find it a tragedy. He refused, so she fired one of the pistols and wounded his left wrist. Ironically, her husband had borrowed them from Cayley, just a few days beforehand, as he wanted them for protection while on a journey. Almost immediately, Cayley drew his sword in his right hand, and the second he did so, she fired again, this time shooting him through the heart. She was close to him when all this happened, as the left sleeve of his shirt was burned by the first pistol shot, and the breast of the shirt by the second. He fell to the floor. Realising what she'd done, the young woman fled from the room, locked the door and sent for her husband. One of the servants, Mary Liddell, noticed her mistress's clothes were dishevelled, something that was out of the ordinary. 
had Cayley tried to force himself on Mrs McFarlane. Another servant, Barbara Martin, had been out at the time of the murder, but when she returned, Mrs McFarlane told her she'd killed him in self-defence, fearing she was indeed going to be sexually assaulted by him. When her husband arrived, she showed him the body lying in a pool of blood. She explained to him what had happened, and he exclaimed, "'Oh, woman, what have you done?' McFarlane was unsure what to do, so consulted with some friends. They advised him that his wife should leave the city immediately. After packing a few things, Mrs McFarlane left her home at six o'clock that evening. She walked down the high street, followed by her husband a few paces behind, then disappeared. McFarlane waited a few hours Then at ten o'clock, deeming it safe to do so, he called for the local magistrates, who arrived at the house and secured it with everyone inside. An eyewitness later said of Cayley, I saw his corpse after he was unclothed, and saw his blood where he lay on the floor for twenty-four hours after he died, just as he fell, so it was difficult to straighten him. This was caused by rigor mortis, which by that time had set in. Criminal charges were brought against Mrs McFarlane by the Lord Advocate, Sir David Dalrymple. Cayley's father and brother, also Cornelius, had criminal letters also raised against her. She was called to the court to face trial in February 1717, but never appeared, so was declared an outlaw. Her husband, although he'd helped her to escape, was never charged with any crime, having kept his part in the cover-up secret. In a bid to clear herself, Cayley's landlady, Mrs Murphy, who kept a grocer's shop in the Cowgate, had a pamphlet published, vindicating herself from all the accusations that Mrs McFarlane had thrown upon her character. She also vehemently denied Mrs McFarlane had been at her house the Saturday before the murder. However, Mrs McFarlane had been seen by a witness, leaving the close where Mrs Murray lived, and after climbing the back stairs, had been seen crossing Parliament Square, going towards her house. What happened to Mrs McFarlane is unknown, although Margaret Swinton, the maternal great-aunt of Sir Walter Scott, remembered that when she was a girl of around seven or eight, she was once left alone at Swinton House near Duns in Berwickshire, while her parents, Sir John and Lady Swinton, went to church, as she was unwell. As she wandered about, she entered the parlour, which she'd had strict instructions not to do, where she encountered an unknown lady sitting at the breakfast table. The lady, who Margaret described as beautiful, seemed just as surprised as she was, and a few kind words passed between them. The lady then asked her to speak to her mother on her own about the encounter. Margaret then went to the window eagerly looking out for her mother to return, thinking of what had just been said. When she turned round, the lady was gone. Margaret did speak to her mother alone that Sunday and told her what had happened. Her mother praised her for her discretion and told her to keep the secret. She found out that the lady she'd seen that day was Captain Cayley's killer, who had found temporary refuge at the Swinton house, as she was a relative of the family and had hidden behind a concealed panel. Her mother had shown her her hiding place and told her, You're a very sensible girl, Peggy, for if you had spoken of that poor lady to anyone but me, it might have cost her her life. Scott later wrote about the incident in Peveril of the Peak in 
noting that Mrs. McFarlane had returned to Edinburgh, where she stayed for the rest of her life. John McFarlane remarried on 6th October 1719, but it's unclear whether Mrs. McFarlane was dead by this time or whether he remarried regardless of her status. John Cayley's younger brother, Cornelius, a barrister, became well known for the prosecution of Jacobites after the 1715 uprising. He died in 1779. If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.